Hello my friends, I'm Bianca, the Ticking Tanvon, and today we have Praka in the studio to talk about his three watch collection. Welcome, great to have you on board today, Praka. Yeah, thanks for having me, Bianca. I appreciate uh, yeah, taking your time and to have a chat with me in my collection. So how did this watch hobby of yours begin? Where did it start? It started not too long ago, um, actually. Um, I, I, I really started only getting into watches as, a, as an enthusiast probably about five or I would say about five years ago now. Prior to that, I've, I've had watches in the past, but they've mainly been sort of fashion watches. And, you know, I've had one. I haven't really thought about it. I just bought one because I liked the look of it just before um, sort of COVID and everything else. Um, that's when I started really you know, looking at it and researching into watches. And, and then I got into it. My dad has had a watch and he's had the same watch for like all his life. It's still there somewhere in his drawer. He doesn't really wear it. It's this two-tone. Something that I wouldn't really wear, but that's not where my inspiration's from. It's just something that I, I guess, self got into um, and hasn't stopped. Every um, watch collector I've spoken to, they have a philosophy behind their collection. What's yours? I think it's evolving, my philosophy. It started off really as um, bang for buck, or I guess affordability versus what I get out of a watch. And to be honest, it hasn't really changed. However, um, you know, I, I really started off on brands like Seiko. It's like one of my sort of, you know, I, I really enjoy it. And I think there's so much history to it. And I um, tend to gravitate towards that more than other stuff. And then slowly I got into the world of micro brands. I find micro brands yeah, bring such value for money for what you get um, in terms of specs, in terms of finishing and, and, and just the stories behind it as well. A lot of the time it's one or two people, you know, getting together to, to start something and to, because of the passion, sometimes it's not really worth it, but however, they, they enjoy it, they're passionate about it and they, and they want to start it. And yeah, and it, micro brands really took, took over. And I think I would put my collection right now, I think about 50% micro brands or even more for about 60% micro brands. So yeah, that's how I guess heavily invested I am in. Um, but yeah, I would say that's my philosophy. We just slightly touched on it, but when purchasing a watch, what are the main features that are applied to your collection? Um, I, I started off very much as I want to try and get as many different types of watches. Mm -hmm. So different complications of, you know, I want a chronograph, I want a GMT, I want a dress watch, I want a tour watch, I want to, you know, that kind of spread. I want to be able to sort of experience everything. But I think uh, as I'm you know, getting more refined, I don't really necessarily need one of everything. Gravitate towards having a bit more, something more robust, tall type watch. I've got, you know, I've got two young kids and, and it doesn't, it doesn't really make sense for me to be wearing a dress watch all day. <laughs> it's just, it's just, it's just not practical. Practicality is definitely one of them. Um, but I do love dress and vintage pieces. I got a bug, you know, basically I, I bought my first one and, and since then I've bought just had this thing but again it lacks the robustness to be a, a daily wear and plus you don't really want to you know wear a daily and get scratched and you know if I'm going to the playground with the kids or anything like that so yeah I guess you know in saying that now now it's becoming more you know thinking about what I do day to day but at the same time I don't necessarily enjoy wearing a g-shock all the time so you've been collecting for some time now yep. was it a bit of a challenge to hone in on these three today yeah, it was probably one of the hardest decisions I've ever had to make uh, <laughs> in, in anything. But seriously speaking, when, when I was told, you know, like, got to pick three, it was, it was too hard. I mean, I have a fairly big collection, not huge by any means, but, you know, I've got, um, you know, just under, I think it's like 17 or something like that, which is a decent amount, you know, rotating through. I, I try and get through my watches. I like wearing different ones. Sometimes in a day I might wear two or three, you know, if I, if I'm home, if I feel like it, I might just swap it around, but then I'll have one or two that are just sort of dormant. I have a lot of watches that I have sentimental value. However, I didn't necessarily pick all my watches today because of that. If I picked all my watches out of sentimental value, it'd probably be very different to what, um, what I've got here in front of me today. Well, Praka, I'm very excited to okay. see what you have brought in. Sure. Um, can we start with the first one? Yeah. Yeah, problems. So... So this is my Seiko Lord Matic from 1968. Oh, wow. So it's a 68, yeah. So I think it's 55, 55 years young. This is my very first vintage watch that I bought. The The history behind um, Seiko, I think, sometimes gets a bit washed away. They started in 1881. You know, that's a lot of 
brand history, brand heritage behind it as well. And some of the designs, you know, they just don't do them like them anymore, especially in the 60s and the 70s. So really drew, drew me towards that. And plus, um, I've got small wrists. Because huh. I had the cases on a smaller side. Correct. Yeah, it definitely is. And I do have watches that are much bigger, as you see. But I find that sometimes in vintage watches, at least, they never made them that big back in the day. And something about it um, being a little bit daint, a little bit, um, you know, smaller, thinner and everything else. I guess another one of the things that I like about this watch is the design language. Seiko brought in this young designer, Taro Tanaka, back in the 60s to basically clean up their design. They wanted to bring something in and say, hey, look, we need our something unique. We need like a design language. And, and the thing they brought in was called the Seiko Grammar of Design based upon um, gem cutting. There's things like, you know, the hands, the indices and everything must be flat because it has to reflect light. And when they're talking about the, the, the sides, the cases and the angles to the cases, again, same thing. It's very like, it's like a gem. And that's where this is coming from. And basically they use that throughout their entire um, range, you know, they went to the Grand Seikos had the same thing and that's where, you know, all your Zeratsu polishing and all that came from. Another one of the reasons why I really love this watch. I guess the sentimental part of this is that I wore this watch when my second son was born and Beautiful. yeah, and you know, it was something that I'll have for the rest of my life. I think it's one of those watches and I guess this Lord Matic range in general, it was when, it, when they first released it, which I think was about 1967, 1968. When it first came in, a lot of the movements that are used, it's a 5600 movement, I think is what it's in this. They were used in Grand Seiko and King Seikos, which were sort of their higher end models as well. So the same movements were used in these. So it drew me towards that. And I guess the funny thing on this watch is that I bought this blind, as in I bought it uh, off someone over east okay. online, didn't, didn't put it on, didn't try it on, nothing. I was... I just took a gamble, took a chance. That time when I purchased this, it was it was a lot of money towards a watch. Started off, you know, not wanting to spend a lot of money on a watch because I didn't really understand, I guess, the value behind it and why would someone spend that much money on a watch? So for me, this is a lot of money to send to someone potentially mm. to nothing. But um, um, luckily enough, I got this and I'm um, stoked by it. Yeah, it certainly came through on the good, well-balanced watch. Thank you. Thank you. I'll, I'll get yeah, it looks like and fairly lightweight, so... Yeah, I think the strap probably weighs more than the actual watch <laughs> itself. Um, it's just like weighing um pretty thick strap on that. When I bought it, it was running okay. It wasn't had the full power reserve. wasn't quite running right. So I thought, I'll, I'll go get it serviced. So I went and brought it to this um, watchmaker to get it serviced. They said, look, we'll call you back. We'll, we'll let you know what it's going to be and what, what needs to be done. So I called him and they said, they said, yeah, you know, it needs general service. It looks pretty good. And then when I went to go pick up the watch, he said, oh, look, um, did you know that this watch has never been serviced? I said, what do you mean? He's like, it's never been serviced. So it was about 50 something years and it was still ticking, still going, you know, wow. and that's how well made some of these watches are. And how do you like to wear this watch? Is there certain occasions that you wear? Yeah, yeah. Like I mentioned before, it's hard for me to wear, um, you know, vintage pieces around my kids that already want to damage it and stuff. I've, you know, if I'm going to a wedding or if I'm going to some sort of function or something, I'd, I'd like to wear it. I, I do rotate straps between them. You know, if this one is a bit, um, I guess it makes it even more vintage with the with the, with the the stitching and the, and the sort of the faded brown um, uh, Pauline as well. So, yeah, it's nice. Beautiful. Thank you for sharing the story behind your Seiko. No worries. Yeah. What else do we have on the table? Okay. Um, so, yeah, I'll go with the second one here. So, this is my Christopher Ward C63 Sealander GMT. I went through a phase that I wanted to tick off, you know, I want to tick off a chronograph. I want to tick this off, tick that off. I wanted to be able to get into a GMT, but, you know, there's, I guess there's levels to some of these um, GMT prices that, that can be expensive as well but then again that's where i went lent into my micro brand experience my very first micro brand wasn't this brand it was a, it was a different brand and since then i caught the bug and i wanted to try more and more and i always heard about christopher ward as a bit of a value for money bank for buck kind of brand and i think in you know in more recent years they've really gone up you know they've, they've started bringing up their bel canto the 12 and all these sort of I guess a bit more fancier pieces, and I think they've opened up to the mass market a little bit more. It's a 39 mil, um, 39 mil watch that wears great on my wrist. Takes inspirations from the Explorer Two, um, and also there's a Grand Seiko reference. I can't think of the top of my head, but it makes it its own. 
you know, like there's many elements in here, the trident second hand, the sword like hands or the little sharp hands on it, the date position. And there's a lot of elements in here that is similar, but it makes it its own. And I love the fact that it comes with quick release bracelet, which is not something you see very often where you can press that button and bang, the bracelet comes out. It definitely saves a lot of time when you want to change between straps. I can adjust, micro adjust uh, on the fly. Things like this where I guess brands, you know, to a higher tier, well, you know, paying a lot more, then you'll get these features. But for a watch that was sub 2K, I think it's really good value for money. And um, yeah, and it's also come along with me in a couple of journeys so far. I like the fact that I can look at the uh, orange hand and go at home, this is what's happening. And you know, this is what my kids are doing at this time. This is what my wife's doing at this time. And that's one of the reasons why I brought the GMT as my uh, three piece collection. Beautiful. Well, thank you for bringing that one in. I just hear I was, I said. A bit more weight on this one. Yeah, definitely a bit more hair. <laughs> a lot of bracelets, I guess they taper from the 20 mil down to a, a 16 mil, right. something like that. But this one is 20 to 18. So it's still quite a heavy taper and it's quite uh, you know chunky, a bit robust. This is a watch that I'll wear at home and I'll be doing things and doing stuff at the playground or being clean. I, I don't mind because it's got that tool aesthetic brushed all over it does have you know, elements of um some polish on it too but for the most part it's quite um quite attractive yeah. thank you all righty let's have a look at the our lucky laugh yes so this one here um so this is the Palios uh c4 version 4 in the no fuss black now i've paired it with a, an aftermarket um jubilee as i've already touched on micro brands and affordable watches are um, I think one, because that's where my interest lies and two, where I can find a lot of bang for buck. Halios is known for, um, I guess one of the OG micro brands. They've been around for a long time. They've been around since 2009, I believe. Um, and same with Christopher Ward, they've been around for 20 plus years as well. Um, and you know, their, their micro brands popping up every day, dime a dozen everywhere nowadays. And it's a lot, e I guess it's a lot easier to get um, brands started up because there are a lot of factories and stuff that are already set up that you can dedicate and they can, you know, there are connections, people can help out. And I wouldn't say it's easy by any means, um, but, but, but it's a lot easier now than it was 20 years ago yeah. to try and start something up like this. And, and Halios, um, is one of those brands that have consistently, you know, they've been in the game for this long and they're still in the game for this long. So I really appreciate that. Yeah, so they're based out of um, Vancouver in Canada. Jason, and so the brand owner is a bit of a one-man band, does everything. One of the um, fellow Red Bar member uh, told me this. Um, he's um, he's Canadian and he mentioned that. So this, the name Seaforth, I didn't know what it was. And to be honest, if you go on the website, uh, social media, anything, you don't really know why it's called a Seaforth. Mm -hmm. So Seaforth is a name of a, uh, an army barracks or like a, a naval barracks in, um, in Vancouver. I've never heard it spoken anywhere else before. So yeah, fun fact. It really embodies what I like in a watch. You know, it, it, it's, it's robust, well-made, well-built. Um, it's, you know, for the money, it's, you know, very well finished and it's got that tool aesthetic and I, I like it on the Jubilee sometimes because it's just a little bit blingier. You have to it up Just it up a bit. Yeah, exactly. But a lot of the times I also wear it on the rubber strap because it's, I can go in the water with it. I can do whatever with it. And, it, and it's built for that. And this whole journey of micro brands and affordable range, and I was so, I guess, sucked into it and needed another outlet to sort of like get out of it. You know, I wanted another avenue to, to be able to express my love for these. Started my podcast um, based on that. One of the most fun things out of that is talking to um, other micro brand owners. And in fact, I've spoken to a couple talking about their journey, how they got there. And it really makes me appreciate micro brands even more yes they don't have the i guess the brand heritage that um, you know, seiko do or brolex do or tudor do or whatever however you know they're trying to make it their own you know they're trying to give people what they want as enthusiasts and we're a finicky bunch i think we <laughs> we want everything but we don't want to pay you know the most out of it especially that, that sort of sector and that sort of micro brand sort of affordable sector i find that a lot of people want every spec they can get for the, for the money they pay for, which is, I guess, fair enough. But sometimes you can't give everything. So it's great to see the the process behind it and how watches come alive and, and just the stories as well. So anyway, that was my, that's my another outlet, another passion behind my um, micro brand sort of affordable rate. Amazing. And being a micro brand, yeah. did you have to wait long to acquire this one? 
Yes, <laughs> I did. I did. Halios have an interesting, um, I guess, business model. You can't just go on the website and sort of buy it. You have to get on this like a lottery list and you put your name in and you'll get contacted if you're lucky. Uh, and I was lucky and I bought it. And like a lot of my watch purchases are very opportunistic, I would say. I have an idea of what I want and I have a list of what I want. But a lot of times I don't necessarily get it unless I see a watch come up for sale. I don't think I've bought many watches brand new, actually. Probably half-half. A lot of my watches are vintage or used or someone's lightly used or something like that. Because for me, it doesn't doesn't really matter if, as long as the story is there. And for me, is a lot of the brands that I do chase, it's not like I can go down to the shop and go buy one here. It's not uh, possible. A lot of these, they, they stock it somewhere in America or in, just online only. And this is like one of those times I took a chance. And um, yeah, I got lucky, I guess. I think it was about a year and a bit. I was on the waiting list. For, oh, well, the lottery list for. Fraga, thank you so much for coming in today. It's been an absolute joy. Yeah, no, thank you so much for having me. Um, yeah, it's been an absolute ball being here and chatting with you and, and going through our through watch collection. And for completing today's challenge, can I offer you a glass of whiskey? Sure, let's do it. And guys, check out Prucker's podcast. And if you enjoyed today's video as much as I did, be sure to look at our other content. Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on the next free watch collection.